In this next section, we'll look at how to use the override symbology and element templates to modify the display of the train model features. Let's start by clicking in view one to make sure that that model is active. Then we want to select the element selection tool, click on the train model outline and hover so that we get the context sensitive menu toolbar and select the properties tool. And move your cursor onto the dialog and you'll notice that almost all the fields are grayed out and you can't turn anything on or off in the display area. This is because the train model is referenced into this design file and as is common with most references, it's read only. There is a special setting called override symbology that will allow us to make some modifications. So down at the bottom of your dialog, you'll see override symbology. Select that and let's toggle it to yes. And when you do that, you'll see that the fields will become active on the dialog box. So let's go ahead and toggle our triangles on. You can either double click or select on and you'll see the triangles display in the view. You can also turn on the major contours, minor contours, toggle the triangles back off. You can work with these features and see that these work like they did in the previous exercise, toggling them on and off. You will notice that as you toggle the features on and off, only the view on the left, the 2D view, is updating and the view on the right, the 3D view, is not changing. This is because the override symbology controls are view dependent, so they'll be set independently for each view. Now let's take a look at how we can use element templates to control the train display. When override symbology was enabled, in addition to making the fields available to toggle features on and off, a new field called override template was added. And this field will allow us to select an element template to control the train display. Now note that this does not change the display settings in the source train model, only the display in the reference file. Let's click in view one to make sure it's active and then we'll hover over the train to get our properties tool. Then down at the bottom where override template is, we want to select that and under terrain select existing triangles. And you'll notice that the display update showing just the triangles and that's using the element template to control that display. If we go back into the properties, go back to your element templates and under terrain again select existing contours, again you'll see the display update to show the existing contours. Now let's take a look at how we can use element templates to control the train display in view 2 here, the 3D model. So first we want to click in view 2 to make it active. Using the element selection tool, select the train model and hover and select the properties tool and the first thing we need to do is turn override symbology on and as we do that you'll see the fields activate and the override template field will appear and we want to set this to terrain existing triangles and you'll see the view update now let's window in on this view a bit or get a closer look because this looks different from our display on the left. The train display in this view looks different due to the view attribute setting. And if we go to the top of the view, select view attributes, you'll see that the display style is set to illustration ignore lighting. And if we move over to view one and look at the view attributes, the display style is set to wireframe. So this is what is different in controlling the looks of these displays. If we go back to view 2 and select the pull down, you'll see there are quite a number of different display styles already set up. And if we take a look at, oh, let's say smooth modeling, you'll see the display change yet again. So all of these different view settings, the display style, all of these will give you a different look and feel for the view. So you have many options to choose from for how you would like to see the train displayed in this view. Now for the remainder of our work in this course, we'll be working in the 2D model view. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the 3D model view and maximize our 2D model view in view one.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.